Hi everyone. Today I'm going to cover the topic regarding the rotor response due to imbalanced forces. Understanding the rotor response using a simple equation helps you to grasp what parameters are important in designing the turbo machines such as rocket engines or compressors. The rotor mass imbalance forces is the most common force which is responsible for the transfer of the rotational energy into the lateral vibration. As you well know, the rotor imbalance is a condition of unequal mass distribution in the radial direction. Assuming a single mass Jeffcott rotor, you could write an equation of motion shown on the top left. Based on this equation, you could draw the rotor response plot shown on the bottom figure. We are going to look into the five different areas of interest as dissected below in the rotor response plot. Understanding this plot gives you a lot of insight towards what factors affect the rotor response in each segment and eventually enables you to be a better engineer. The x-axis of this plot is the frequency ratio which the rotor running speed divided by the system natural frequency. So when the frequency ratio equals to 1, it means that the rotor running speed coincides with the natural frequency. And at this condition, the rotor response is the highest. If the frequency ratio is less than 1, the rotor running speed is less than the system natural frequency. And at this condition, the rotor response increases with increasing rotor running speed. If the frequency ratio is larger than 1, the rotor running speed is higher than the system natural frequency. Alright, let's look into the area of interest number 1. At this condition, let's assume that the frequency ratio is 0.3. At this condition, the running speed omega is small. That means you could simplify the equation as highlighted in the red box. This simplified equation indicates that if you have a high shaft stiffness k, the amplitude motion of the rotor can be substantially reduced. So intentionally designing the shaft with high stiffness is very important when you are designing the machine that mainly operates below first natural frequency. But this equation is driven from the Jeffcott rotor model which assumes rigid bearing support. So in reality you could also soften up the bearing support to isolate the rotor motion from the housing. At this condition where running speed is low with respect to the natural frequency, the imbalance force is relatively small and the rotor spins about the geometrical center. And also the response is in phase with the imbalance force. And bearing load is almost equal to the imbalance load. Let's move on to the area of interest number 2 where you could say the frequency ratio is about 0.8. At this condition, the equation of rotor amplitude motion is defined in the red highlighted box. As you could see in the figure, the whirl amplitude increases as the rotor approaches the critical speed. Because the denominator value in the equations becomes smaller with speed. At this condition, the response of the rotor begins to lag behind the imbalance force. Also, the bearing load begins to exceed the imbalance force by a significant amount. Alright, moving on to the area of interest number 3, where the rotor running speed coincides with the system natural frequency. At this condition, the denominator on the left side becomes 0. So the amplitude motion x can be simply written as a function of imbalance over damping, as shown in the equation highlighted in red. So at this critical speed, the rotor response can be reduced or amplified depending on how much damping you have. At this condition, typically the bearing load is much greater than the imbalance force. 
Moving on to the area of interest number four, where the rotor speed just surpassed the natural frequency. And we could assume the frequency ratio is about 1.2. At this condition, the denominator value of the rotor response x increases with the frequency ratio. So the amplitude motion x decreases with increasing running speed. At this condition, the bearing load decreases while the imbalance force continues to increase. Alright, let's move on to the last area of interest, number 5. This condition is where the running speed is high and we could assume that the frequency ratio is about 2.3. At this condition, the amplitude motion x is approximately similar to the eccentricity E, which is the distance from the rotational axis to the center of mass as shown on the right figure. To drive the simplified equation x equals negative e, you could simply follow the steps shown on the right. At this condition, the inertia of the rotor is now reacting almost all of the imbalance force. As discussed, the rotor is spinning about its mass center and the bearing load is relatively constant while the imbalance force continues to increase with speed squared. Today I've covered the rotor response due to imbalance forces by breaking down the responses to five segments. And I hope you gained some insights from this video. That's all I have for you today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.